Let's go to Eugene, Washington at Oregon. Oregon is a 13 and a half point favorite over under 72 and a half. Woo. This uh, Oregon, I think if they win out and they win the Pac-12 championship, they're going to have a really strong case, especially if they keep winning how they've been winning, to go to the college football playoff, especially if other teams fall. So Oregon is very motivated to keep winning. Uh, you know, when I look at this game, it does feel like just naturally, you know, my instinct tells me that this is probably the peak of the Oregon market. I mean, they've covered like five or six in a row. Everyone is showing them so much love, saying they could win it all. But like, you know, you look in the month of October, they beat Cal, Arizona, Stanford, you know, then they, they beat UCLA. UCLA didn't punt and they won 45 to 30. So I do think that this is like their offense is performing at a peak, peak level, elite. Like I don't think their offense can get any better. Um, so I I think that this is the peak of the market. So when I look at this game, I don't see how Washington gets many stops, right? Like there's just no you can't break this game down and say like this is how they're gonna get stops. Bo Nix could misread the defense once or twice and throw a pick there could be obviously like a, a big sack negative play but washington's defense is terrible if you look at adjusted epa per play of power five defenses washington is bottom five they don't really do anything well and but on the other side of the ball this is what people aren't talking about enough oregon's defense is almost as bad and their bottom 10 power five adjusted epa per play and like all the teams that i mentioned that they played like they just got done playing colorado too but like stanford put up four touchdowns arizona put up 22 like they played byu without all their receivers washington state put up 40 plus you know ucla didn't punt oregon's defense and then if you if you break it down like you look okay why did stanford run the ball 34 times why did why did byu run it 25 times well all the receivers were out but these teams are running it against some oregon's run defense is pretty good they're fairly respectable, but their pass defense numbers are horrific. They can't force any incompletions and they get no pressure on the quarterback. They're 128th in passing down sack rate. So, you know, what does Washington do very well? They don't really run the ball. They don't play defense. They can pass the ball. One of the best passing offenses in the country and they throw it a lot. Like all they do is throw it. It's like an ab. They throw it at like an air raid rate. That's great here. That's what you want to do. You want to throw it every down on Oregon. So, and their Penix is not going to be under pressure. So this is a to me. A, if it gets to fourteen, I'm waiting for the fourteen because even if Oregon is like blowing this open and gets a couple stop back door wide open in this game, and I, I just think that there's a chance that you know. Washington, maybe they get stopped once or twice, and this game just goes from seven to 14, seven. Like Washington's offense should have a ton of success here. For what it's worth, since 2004, Oregon has dominated the series 14 and two straight up over that stretch. The Ducks have gone 12 0 and 1 against the spread as a favorite, uh, which I thought was pretty wild. But yeah, I think Washington's offense can keep up here just by throwing it, which is all they do. I'm waiting to get a 14, and I think I'll have to grab it. You agree or disagree? Well, first off, this game is an over game. And I, I'm saying that it's 72 and a half. You know, I'm saying that I'm feeling pretty confident in it. It feels like UCLA, Oregon all over. It, yeah, and and I'm, yeah, I, I'll get to that. But I project this game at 11 and a half. There's value on the Washington side. But of course, you want that 14 to get that three score backdoor cover thing in there. So I, I will happily wait for that or get it live because, you know, it'll. <laughs> with the way that these teams are going to throw downfield, you're going to get some crazy live number swings possibly. So, Listen, yeah, I also I also think before you go, I, I think that is more important in this game. It's also yeah, a great live trading game because yeah. I don't think Washington is going to settle for field goals. You no. can't really in this game. So like 14 is so key because like there's just going to be – they have to score touchdowns, and I DeBoer is a smart guy. I think he knows that. So like falling 13 is I think way – Way less of a chance here, given how I think this plays out. So, yeah, the 14 is massive. It won't go there. I think it might. There's a ton of public support. There are There's some sharp support for Oregon, too. I think it'll get there. You got to be quick. Put the alerts on the Action Network app. Get that, because I think it'll get scooped up right away. 
Yeah, and, and though I'll pivot over to the over. There's a couple things that you don't go around saying, oh, I want over 72 and a half, but uh, there's a few things in here that people should know. Both of these offenses are top five in offensive finishing drives. That goes up against two defenses that are outside the top 100 in defensive finishing drives. So a lot of touchdowns, not field goals. And both offenses are top five in havoc allowed. What that means is, is that Penix and Bo Nix are not going to be kicking the ball around. There won't be interceptions. There won't be fumbles, and they won't allow teams to play in their backfield. And both offenses are national leaders in third down conversion percentage. And these defenses are 124th and 126th in third down defense. So there's not going to be – who's getting a stop here? I mean, each team is going to have long drives that result in points. Oregon's number one in success rate in standard downs. Washington is number one in success rate in passing downs. So both these teams, top eight in red zone TD percentage. I mean, it goes on. And so you start to feel like this is UCLA-Oregon which we took an over on a little ballsy in the number in the 70s, taking an over on it landed 75 with cash for everybody. When you go and look at that, there was one punt, four field goals, and there were points just left on the table from those drives. Other than that, every single offensive drive was productive and there aren't a lot of key numbers in the seventies, but 73 is one that hits 1.5% of college football games. It's the biggest number in the seventies range, although it doesn't happen that often. So there was buyback in this market on 73. So over 72 and a half is the borderline where I would stop hitting the over. But there's, I mean, who's getting a stop here? No one's getting a third down stop. And if there's a field goal in this game, it'd be like seeing Sasquatch. I mean, you're just not going to see a lot of field goals here. So that's how I'm going to play it accordingly. Yeah, and I'm just checking now there is, this game's at night. Clear skies, one mile an hour winds. There's no yeah. weather um, to be a factor. Yeah, I don't see many teams getting the stop. I mean, both teams have been, uh, you know, Washington's offensive numbers are obviously a little depressed because of the weather last week. Oregon's defensive numbers even maybe should be a little worse if they played BYU with any of their receivers. But these teams that are trying to run it against Oregon are doing them so much favor because their run defense is decent. Washington won't do that, which is why I think that they'll have no problem moving the ball. They're just going to come out and throw it a million times. And that's okay. That's what you want to do against Oregon you don't need to establish the run or do anything um so yeah I I agree it's over and uh it's Washington I'm waiting on that 14 if I don't get it I, I'll probably you know if it stays where it is now I might buy it I would never hardly ever buy to 14 um but in this game I would I would buy it up to like if I could get like a minus 118 um I think because I think it's that, that important in this game where there should just be traded touchdowns how one of these teams could get a stop, by the way, is fumbles. The Oregon has recovered every one of their fumbles this year. And Washington, I think it's fumbled eight times. They've recovered seven of the eight. So whose fumble luck is going to run out? Because that literally could decide the cover. It's just you fumble it, the other team recovers, that's their stop, and then they score a touchdown. So keep an eye on the loose rock. 